Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah, today we will continue with town planning. So, now origin of towns. If we conduct a survey regarding the origin of some of the important existing towns and cities of the world, it can be clearly established that any town or city originated because of a certain specific cause. The various contributing factors for the origin of towns and cities are broadly classified into two categories that are topographical factors and functional aspects. Now regarding the topographical factors contributing to the origin of towns, a town settlement can be started if the area is favorable for industrial units or people can start town settlement on a hilly area in order to achieve the object of defense. Similarly, a plain area can be used for town settlement for the purpose of business activities or people can settle near river banks, sea or ocean fronts. Regarding the functional aspects that are responsible for the origin of town, they include education, religion, political influence and health resorts. Now growth of towns. The towns grow during the passage of time in a number of ways and the various forces which contribute to the overall development of a town include transport facilities, installation of industries, expansion of factories, provision for defense, proximity to the agricultural lands, availability of electrical power. However, it should be remembered that the towns and cities are not solely the products of industrialization because the towns and cities existed much before the industrial revolution as well. Now, why people like to stay together in urban areas that eventually leads to the growth of towns? People tend to stay together in order to facilitate defense from attack from outsiders. Man by nature is a social animal and he gets much more satisfaction living a life in the company of his fellows. Also, an urban man can develop contacts and friendships with like-minded people having common interest and at the same time, he can retain a very high degree of privacy. The urban area may provide a reliable water supply or a meeting place for exchange of goods or a place of assembly for religious, political or administrative purposes. The need of man for employment and opportunities regarding education, recreation, business, marriage will all add to the functional aspects of town planning growth. And ultimately, a town provides a platform for the varieties of things that a person needs. The growth of towns to a large extent will depend on the economic forces because it's found that an urban area is usually the center of specialized activities and hence the size of town will depend on the amounts of goods and services supplied to the outsiders that is the exports of a town moreover the money earned by export activities would provide a fund for supporting the production of goods and the services required by the population of the town the facilities of transport or communication also increase the population of town. The means of transportation like aerial ports, waterways, roadways and railways all lead to the growth of towns. It must be noted that the above mentioned modes of transportation while they lead to the horizontal growth of town but the availability of mechanical lifts escalators and elevators had made it possible for the vertical growth of towns in the form of skyscrapers. Now growth of towns according to origin. Growth of towns according to origin can be classified into natural growth and plant growth. Now natural growth. If we look at most of the towns in the past that were built, they were built in a natural way. And the development took place without any future planning. The men on the spot and the interested parties took decisions regarding the growth of towns for immediate comfort and convenience of the residents. And the provision of various amenities such as road system, 
parks, playgrounds, schools, industrial units were made in an irregular way without any consideration for the future expansion of the town. The natural growth of a town may be in the form of a concentric spread, it may be in the form of a ribbon growth, a satellite growth or scattered growth and inshallah we will discuss all of them in detail. Now concentric growth or concentric spread. It is a natural tendency of people to be as near as possible to a town or city. As a result of this tendency, the town develops in the form of concentric rings. And such a growth creates many problems such as traffic congestion, concentration of population in a particular area, narrow streets and improper housing. The town growth in a concentric spread is represented by a series of concentric circles or rings. The first zone consists of the central business district. In fact, it is the focal point of all commercial, social and civic life of the town of that area. It represents the original settlement and land use in this zone is mainly in the form of offices, hotels and theatres. As the town grows, and the people who can afford more transport and charges go away from the central zone, which further leads to the formation of low income group, middle income group and high income group. The idea of a concentric growth or concentric spread is based on the facts that uh, similar or functionally related activities will be located at the same distance from the center. Thus a town grows radially from the center whereby each zone extends its area by evading the adjoining zone towards the periphery of the town area. Now ribbon development. Ribbon development or road centric growth is the tendency of people to build as near to the road as possible. It has been observed that because of the improvement of road surface and growth of motor traffic, it is the natural tendency of everyone to build as near as possible to the main road. The building activity therefore expands in a natural way along the sides of the main road in the form of ribbon of houses, factories, shops. Historically speaking, ribbon development started mainly after the industrial revolution. Ribbon development began prevalent along the railway lines predominantly in Russia, United Kingdom and the United States of America. Now the various disadvantages of ribbon development and the various measures that can be taken to control these disadvantages. It is seen that in the ribbon development, houses extend in a long strip. There is increase in the cost of various basic utility services such as water supply, electricity, postal deliveries as well as telephone services which in turn results in the wastage of available resources. The development of these ribbons causes to lose and to scatter the community around and in turn there is lack of social life. The future, involve, the future improvement becomes costly and difficult if not impossible. The houses face heavy traffic associated with noise, dust and undesirable smell. The interior portion is left undeveloped which results in the wastage of valuable land. There are various chances of traffic accidents and traffic delays because of the presence of pedestrians on the main road. The ribbon development spoils the countryside and if carried to an extreme makes the countryside invisible to the road user. The traffic of the main road is also considerably affected by the local traffic of ribbon development. As well as the traffic capacity and the efficiency of main road are reduced. The problem of ribbon development is a very complex problem involving political, technical and legal measures for its solution. It requires a cooperative effort by the legislators, town planners, traffic department and the adjacent land owners. Considering the various causes of ribbon development, the following measures can be taken to avoid these ill effects. Land use zoning 
to check undesirable building activities in the vicinity of highways, regulation and control of traffic using these highways, removal of encroachments from the road, and control of advertisements and obstructions to the view.